the other one is like you're getting it. So like there's no sound in our computers here. I can't, it won't record me talking. So I use my laptop, but then I project it here so you guys can see it. Okay. How come this is not? Okay. All right. Anyone need more time? Just raise your hand if you need another second or so. Everyone's good? All right. Um, I would slow. Okay. Let's remember that we're in the Holy Presence of God in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dear God, thank you for um, having a good first opening week. Nice weather out. Hopefully, everyone will have a good weekend so they can rest up and relax. St. John the Baptist, the South. Live Jesus in our hearts. Okay, let's look at the drill. Let's do a quick um, survey. Who's got A as an alpha? It's so heartbreaking when no one is in there. B as in broccoli. We got a lot of Bs, but we got some dissenters. C as in Caroline. D as in dogwood. Always good to go with the dogwood. E as in Ellen. Okay, how many people have F as a, I'm not sure. Oh, everyone did raise their hand for dogwood. I thought I saw some dissenters. All right, who's gonna to explain to me why D as a dogwood is the right answer? You're on. Because, wait, D? Oh, now you walk You raised your hand. All right, so explain to me why D as a dogwood is not the right answer. Um, because standard of living and productivity correlate to one another, the higher the productivity, the higher standard of living. And obviously, France is more productive than Germany. So okay, how, how did you find find that out? Because France can uh, produce 32 units of product in an eight hour work day, while Germany can only produce 30 units in a 10 hour work day, which means they're more productive than. So France is what? For one hour, how many units? Did you do break it down? I did not break it down. You just could tell right away. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I think it's one to four, right? Yeah. Is that true? Compared to one to three. So you came up with what answer? Oh, I got B. All right, B as in Brockford. All right, any, any questions? Okay. All right, so yesterday, I like the class average was eight for learning. That, uh, I got to do a better job. We got to be better than we got to be better than eight. Um, someone asked, "Is price impact shortage?" Um, yeah, if you have a shortage of things, so if, like say shortage of Madden games, um, there's two things that could happen, or usually will happen, is you'll raise your price because you're your um, product is more valuable. So the prices will go up. When prices go up, it's an incentive for suppliers to supply more because they're making more profit. So there is something there. Uh, someone asked the difference between price and cost. Price is what a consumer pays. So you, um, by the way, I'm gonna finish off the rest of yesterday. Um, that's why there's no outline for today. Price is what consumer pays cost is the expense to put the item the product together so for an example the price of this shirt for consumers is twelve dollars yes sir can i help you so the price is twelve dollars <laughs> yeah and then the cost would be how much what the expense was to put the shirt together. So how much the supplier paid, which say would be $8. And input is like factors of production. Any, anything that, any cost to making the shirt is an input. Um, 
Positive versus normative. Could someone tell me what a positive statement is? Yes, sir. So a positive statement is like facts. Well, give me an example, um, please. Say there's a carrot and it's or ten dollars. The carrot is ten dollars. Okay. It's a really nice carrot. Okay. That's what a normative statement. The normative was it's a really nice, yeah. right? Okay. So positive, like you said, is fact. Normative is value or judgment or opinion. Economists argue more about which which type of thing. Huh? Norman, right? This their, their opinion, all right? Opportunity cost in the production. Oh, okay. I'm gonna get to this in a second. All right, suggestions, slow down. All right, slow me down. Like if I say, are there any questions and no one asks, I have to assume that you're in the right spot. All right. Now I know sometimes I turn the slide and you're copying. Just tell me to slow down and I, I will. Organize notes better. Here's what happens sometimes. I, I put the notes together and then either I teach a class or something or, or I go through like these and I see, so I change it, but I'll try to, I, I gotta do a better job. Someone didn't like the Cornell notes. You don't have to use the Cornell notes. You could take notes any way you want. I'm never going to come around and check your notes. All right? Like these notes. I might check your notes for the reading. Um, so you do whatever system you want that benefits you the most. I just hand them out as a way that it seems easier to follow. But if it doesn't work for you, that's up to you. Okay? All right, now I want to get back to the production possibilities curve. All right, so here, when we're going from A to B, we're now increasing computers. So what we want to do is when we want to see when we went from two computers, how many bikes is the opportunity cost? So it goes from 14 to 12, so it's two bikes. So when you're going down, computers are increasing. So then you want to see what the opportunity costs are in bikes. Now, if we go the other way, E to D, bikes are now increasing. So you want to look at the opportunity costs of computers. That makes so much Does that make sense now? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. That's good. I think there's a practice question on the on the practice quiz like this. Um, so you could look at it there, but um i just wanted to make sure and thanks again for whoever asked it a lot of people did um so besides like a notes taking class do you want us to have a separate notes for our book page 70? yeah okay when we get to chapter four which will be the first new chapter right because you've read the summer assignment i'll ask you to take notes you can either take notes solve the problems at the end of the book or do a video of what you think is the notes of the chapter, whichever is easy to do, and then just I'll collect them. So you don't want us making another one for like one, two, three, four, right? Oh no, no, you have no. So whatever is increasing on that graph is the opposite of the graph. Yes, because like you're going from zero to two, so you want to see how much two computers is costing you. It's costing you two bytes. Now notice, say like now we go from B. Um, B to C. We've increased two computers, but we go from 12 to nine. Notice the bikes are increasing the cost. So that's an increasing opportunity cost, and we'll talk about that in about a minute. Okay. All right. And some of you didn't feel comfortable on production possibilities curve. You shouldn't. We didn't finish. All right. So are we good with this now? Yeah. All right. There's definitely a test question, a quiz question you feel confident now about. It. Okay, good. I think it's about bananas and something. Uh, all right. All right. So today, by today, you should finish reading again chapters one and two. Um, I'm going to do a Zoom at 8 p.m. on Sunday. It's the same review that I'm doing at 745 on Monday, just giving you alternative options to participate. Okay. Um, you know, obviously you can go to both, but you're getting the same thing. Okay. Um, so 745 on Monday is room 108. This one, I'll send out the Zoom link 
Um, and anyhow, the Zoom link is on the topics page. Um, so you could have it. It's always the same Zoom link. Uh, the practice quiz is posted. That's also on the topics page. And again, you'll get one minute. And by the way, no notes, nothing. Yeah. How does the review usually go? Like, do we bring questions to you? Or... It goes both ways. So I highlight for maybe 10 to 15 minutes of things I think you should probably know in the chapter. And then I open it up to either any questions you have, like say you might have asked a question on that, like we just, or any questions you had on the practice test, like you saw that sees the answer because I gave you the answer, Kate, but you don't know why sees the answer. So yes, so it goes both ways. Any anything else? Okay. All right. We might have got into this yesterday, but it was at the end. So I just wanted to make sure um, that we continue. So if you have a constant opportunity course, so that is the opportunity course is the same, like it's two bytes, two bytes, two bytes, two bytes. You're going to have a straight line. So your production possibilities curve, if it's constant, is always going to look like that. Okay. So if you have a straight line, you know, constant opportunity cost. And the reason the opportunity cost is constant is the resources are easily adaptable. So like if I'm making more calzones, I'm taking away pizza makers, they have the similar skills. So the opportunity cost is gonna be the same. So if you see a straight line, they can ask you what is the opportunity, you know, they could say that, you know, where you have to know it's constant and you have to know it's easily adaptable. Okay. This is more rare. The one that we have looked at. Go. Just tell me when you're good, okay? Yeah. The one that we looked at, like the bode or the concave, that, that's the one that's easy. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, not enough pepperonis on this pizza, by the way, but that's a whole different issue. Okay. All right. So now the other one is we have an increasing opportunity. Remember when I was doing the bikes, it went from two to three. When it's bowed out, okay, that means it's increasing. As you produce more, say, robots, the opportunity cost for pizza, it's increasing. And that's because the resources are not easily adaptable. So say when I, you know, start making robots, I go from zero to one. I might, there might have been like an engineer type person who was making pizzas. I pull that away. But as I'm increasing, I start taking away pizza makers and then the opportunity course increases. And I'll, I'll show you in a second um, both the bode and um, the straight line production possibilities for. But here, increasing opportunity costs, resources are not easily adaptable. The skills of making pizza are totally different than the skills of making robots. Okay, any questions on both of these, constant or increasing opportunity costs? Yeah, I'll give people another like 30 seconds if they're jotting it down. And by the way, you should check your scans because I think one of them has the answer key out of the 80. Last year, the guy had the answer key and he didn't look. So, so would that be, I guess, what would that graph look like? The, the boat? Yeah. I'm going to show it to you right now. If it's 
Okay, so this is the bone, or they sometimes call it concave. So if they show you this, you need to know increasing opportunity cost, non, you know, not easily adaptable. Okay. This is the straight line. You have to know it's constant opportunity cost, easily adaptable resources. Okay. So they could give you this, and the question could be, or, you know, in the production possibilities curve below, and the answer might be resources are not easily adaptable. Yes, sir. Um, is you putting the law of increasing opportunity cost from the graph? Is that a blunder? No, I, I said nothing on the slides, remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm very technologically <laughs> um, ignorant, but that was good. So someone walked in, like someone's homeroom's here and said, holy cow, what is wrong with you? Because I'm up to 10 already, so. Yeah, I don't know. I just hope like, I just hope that Mr. Stembler doesn't come in because like, then I'll get fired. <laughs> Hold it. Maybe I should hope he comes in. Now, um, all right, what shifts? What shifts the production possibilities curve, right? Like what could get to outside? Right. The man. Not, not the man. Not the man. I should slide this in. Okay. Peter? Productivity. Productivity is one and John. And and new tech. Okay. So productivity. So you got new technology. Factories and machines. So again, like factories and machines that can produce more. Okay, I think like that. I think you guys are getting into like I'm going to make it broader. That's all. You being more specific. So two shifters. One are change in resource quantity or quality. Would that be more machines? Yes. Would that be better machines? Yes. All right. So also people. Let's human capital. Say people come to the United States, immigration, a million people come. That's a change in resource quantity. You guys getting educated, that's a change in resource quality. All right. More factories, that'd be quantity of resources. The second thing would be technology, which would make us more productive change in technology. Those are the only two things that shift the curve. That's it. If it's not under those two, that curve doesn't shift. Okay. All right. I'm going to run you through a couple, then I'll let you do some practice ones. We'll see how it goes. All right. What happens if there's an increase in population? What's going to happen to this curve? Someone, someone tell me. Yes. Can I just get the last one? The last one. Yeah. I hope I go the wrong way. Yeah. 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 No problem. Okay. Change in population. I think the shape will stay the same, but like move out a bit more. Like you can produce more robots, more pizza with more people. Okay. So we're going to show that. We're going to put an arrow. And there you go. The whole curve shifts. All right. And that's a change in quantity of resources. All right. There's the arrow, there's the shift. All right, for the next, is there room for the next one? Just say like practice, what does it say? All right, so before you even see, get there, why don't you just draw a bowed out curve? Do you know what I mean? For this increase in pizza technology. 
So you're ready for the second. Okay. Is this what you have like pizzas and computers there, right? What if there's a technology improvement in pizza ovens? In pizza electronics? Uh, wouldn't there be an increase in pizzas being made if it's like increasing? How would I what would I, how would I show this shift? Um, it would be a longer curve extending further over on the pizzas. So it should show a shift in the pizzas, but no shift in the computers? Uh, small shift in the computers are not worse because they're making pizza ovens, which would use similar resources. Okay, let's see. We got some Charles. I was, I was just gonna throw out the pizza. So you were gonna like just go like this and then like extend out. Okay, that that's what's gonna happen. The reason why there's not a decrease in computers is we're not using more resources. The technology is improving, and that's what allows us. So here's how it looks. Okay. So you just start your line kind of the same here, and then you start bowing it out. Okay. Again, the arrow shown. And it's one graph, right? You're just going from the original, shifting it over. All right. Here's what I'd like you to do. Here's the scenario, pizza and robots. So you're gonna do three different graphs. One, you're gonna show me what happens if this new robot making technology. Two, you're gonna show me what happens on the curve, if there's a decrease for the demand for pizza. And three, mad cow disease kills 85% of the cows. You're going to show me what happens, okay? So is there practice one, two, and three there? Yep. Yeah. That's where you're going to feel used to that, okay? Give you a couple of minutes to do that.
Okay, let's see what we have here. All right, new robot making technology. Who's gonna tell me what's going on? Okay, so we're gonna shift out for the robot, but we're gonna give the pizza, we'll have the arrow, there it is. Any questions on that? Yes, sir. So we're drawing a graph, should we draw the original and then draw with that one? Yes. Meaning, put everything on one graph. That's what you're asking, right? Yes. If they want more than a graph, they'll, they'll usually tell you. Okay. All right. So we're good there. Second one. All right, decrease in the demand for pizza. Okay. All right, Mr. Um, Owens. Uh, I had a question behind to that too. God, what's your question? No, I'm going to say, what do the cues represent on the, the axis of the What? What do the cues represent on the axis of the graph? Quantum. And then um, if, when the decrease in pizza demand, the robots will stay the same, but the curve will come in with the pizza. With the pizza. Yeah. Okay. Um, John. I said there's no change. Okay. When the demand for pizza is, Mr. Owens, is it a change in quantity or quality of resources? Is it a change in technology? Yeah. So then it doesn't shift. Okay. So how do we show it? We slide up that curve, like here. Okay, so the demand for pizzas decreases. So we just slide up to show we're making less pizzas. That, that, that is a tricky one. Okay. Any questions on that? Everyone good? Demand is not no, because whenever you're doing shifting in any of the graphs, always go back to what are you shifting? All right, change your no, check no, then I can't be a shift. Okay, and we'll get in, there'll be a lot of that. Okay. Uh, so the mad cow disease, sorry, I, I just that shifts in, but here. No effect on robots, then you're shifting in. Okay. And you might not be the expert, but cows, you need like milk for cheese and stuff for pizza. Huh? <laughs> Do you know that people did order pizzas without cheese? But still, on the whole, most pizzas have cheese. So you go going there. Any questions on these three? Anyone? Any questions? All right. In those like pockets behind you should be a board, a marker, and an eraser. You should get them out. You don't have one? Right over there, you should probably get the board and the marker. 
You can borrow the parts of next year's eraser. All right, here's what we're going to do a couple of practice, multiple choice questions. I'm going to give you about a minute to do them. When you, you then, um, you just write your answer on the board, okay? So here is the first one. Which of the following explains why a production possibility curve is also represented as concave from the origin, okay? Get a minute to look at that. Then again, when you have your answer, just put it on your board. Huh? About 10 seconds. If you're not sure, take the best guess you have like you would do on a test. Okay. Everyone got something on their board? All right, can I see the board? Board, please. I've got some E's here, some E's, some E's, E's, E's. All right, looks like we got a lot of E's. Increasing opportunity cost is the answer. Good job. By the way, again, all of these are AP questions, so, all right, here it is. All right, for an economy with a straight line production possibilities curve, which of the following must be true? The opportunity cost of the producer, producing another unit is constant, resources completely adaptable to alternative uses, and resources are used efficiently. All right, got a minute to look at that. If your pen doesn't work, there are, your markers don't work, there are other markers over there. Okay, about 20 more seconds. And just, uh, okay, I was gonna say throw that away, yeah. Okay? Yeah, I'll throw it over here. All right. What do we got? Boards, please. We got D's, D's, D's. We got a D and D. Okay. All right. It's D, one and two. All right. By the way, I think if they did this question, they should have had E, one, two, and three. No, hold it. Do they have to be efficient? No. 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 You could still even have on one of these, you could have an A in here, okay? But I thought that would have been made the question hard. I think people might have won for me there. All right. How many people are two for two? Two for the first two? Yep. <laughs> okay. All right. The diagram above shows the production possibilities curve for an economy that produces only consumption and capital goods. All of the following statements about this economy are true, except, all right, so we're looking for the false statement. Give you a minute and 10. Yeah, I don't know. It's just the way the thing produces. Sorry. But I'll help you. E is not the right answer. Which you know, right? Because X isn't the most efficient. It's tied with many.
Okay, about 10 seconds. Okay. All right, what do we have? B, 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 E, D. We got some, okay, Y, B. Why would you say like that's not scary? Right? Why would you say that's not scary? 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 Just think of given the resources. Is that true? It is true. So it's true. But we're looking for all the following statements about this economy are true. Except. Okay. So the answer that most people had is D. Producing at point X will result in greater economic growth than producing other. No, that, that's true. It is, it is a, bear is a blunder. Okay, but here and let me see. The right answer is E, guys. The right guys. The right answer is E. Point X represents the most efficient combination of the two goods, which is wrong, right? Because X and W. Okay. All right. If resources were perfectly substitutable in all activities. Which of the following would be true? So if resources were perfectly substitutes, last one of the day. What? This marker sometimes writes to the center of the frame. Uh, you could just get a new marker. Okay. All right. Anyone feel good about this one? What do you have? All right, B as in broccoli. Because then if they were easily substitute, they'd be easily adaptable. So therefore, it would be a straight line. Okay, so if resources were perfectly set, the production possibilities curve would be a straight line. That means easily adaptable, constant opportunity for it. All right, guys, any questions? All right, put your stuff in the back, fill out the small little form, put it in the box, and you're done. That's what I said. No, because comparative advantage um, would not go with substitutable. So it's a different concept. Did you? I wonder if you're trying to figure it out. Wait, who's good? Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.